session is to kind of go over some of the, the big categories and some of the to-dos um, in terms of dealing with all the types of disruption, whether it be inside the industry, whether it be the renewables, external or ESG pressure, or uh, the collateral that's coming from the financial world. So Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that to me is reinforced is that the one thing you, you can't do is inaction. This is such a dynamic environment that thinking you're okay uh, is, is not on. Yeah, right? it, no head in the sand. No, no head in the sand. Uh, I don't know what the sports metaphor is, but <laughs> you have to do something on these to-do lists. It's, right. it's, uh, it's, it's just mandatory. So I'm gonna propose sort of four areas that I kind of gathered today um, that we should talk about. One would be don't get outmaneuvered by your competition with the digital technologies. And I added actually with new tools and equipment as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that first. So, you know, we had all the buzzwords there today. Um, started with Himera this morning, talking about, you know, the, the role of artificial intelligence and just get in the game. Like, start with something small, get some experience. I think that was a, that, that was a big thing for me is that I knew artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these things are big, but also daunting. And I think yeah. she really, uh, emphasize how you do it. And, and we heard it again, I think, in the afternoon with Sean and Shishel that you don't need to start big, start small, take mm -hmm. risk, take some risk. Yeah, yeah, uh, you gotta take some risks to get some, some game. Get it going. Right. All right, let's talk about the next thing. The next uh, topic or category is, you know, to be a company of the future, you need to avoid, to be, avoid being in the penalty box with your investors by reducing your ESG, environmental, social, and governance risk. And, and ultimately, your business risk. It's not just about yep. uh, checking boxes. There's real risk here that you can mitigate. Um, so we had a great session with uh, Eric from Suncor. Um, and uh, Jennifer, one of the largest pension funds in Canada, about how this stuff really matters. Um, and what you need to do is start, start tracking your Well, metrics. yeah, it does matter. And I think you know, one of the quotes from Eric uh, that uh, we certainly know in our business at Arc Financial is that it's not necessarily the government that is uh, fundamentally the force of change to make ESG a priority. It's the investors, right? It's the capital providers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, I think that you are gonna see increased emphasis on this in the future. You talked about that on your panel. And the companies of the 2020s, uh, those that follow uh, more of an ESG-directed uh, uh, effort are gonna be valued higher than those that don't. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, uh, another kind of broad takeaway is, well, upward momentum exists for oil price. We talked about that today. Uh, leaders still need to be planning for the curveball, where protect against the deflation that could come, whether it be in the oil and gas sector or we talked about renewables today. There's a lot of signposts that uh, in the longer term, um, we could see lower prices for all types of energy, right? It's very competitive. Yeah, I, I mean, it is a deflationary environment for bringing energy to consumers, a jewel of energy from wherever it comes from, it is broadly going down. Now, I know the price of oil is starting to spike up again uh, because of the issues, but you know, this is playing to win in this game is a long-term proposition. Right. You've got to look beyond the cycles uh, that are brought about by geopolitics and other such issues. The broad trend, I think we've got, certainly got that sense from the Shishels, the Kentons, and even the Humeras of the world. I mean, the broad trend is being able to bring more energy to surface to customers at lower price uh, and higher quality uh, over time. Okay, the last one is uh, the team culture and human resources. And you know, I think in oil and gas industry tends to be full of engineers. Um, you know, don't want to think about the soft stuff, but it yeah. really does matter. And that kind of kind of surfaced throughout the day yeah. in a lot of the panels. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love. I, I mean, the session with Jackie and Jana. I mean, I love that session because it's, as I said, you can talk technology till you're blue in the face, but if you don't have the team and the culture and the appropriate places to work that are productive, right. um, you are not playing to win. And, and you've got that sense from Sean too. I mean, you know, he's, uh, have the locker room, he's right? got that culture, he's on the ice, uh, you gotta have the locker room. I mean, the metaphors are, are, are exact. Yeah, yeah, and it was really interesting that, you know, to spark innovation, you got to bring people together, and we heard that story a couple of times today, like Michael Crothers talked about how they're really working hard to bring, like, people from their retail to analyze some of their upstream projects, and wow, they get, like, an idea they never had before. Yeah. And so these workspaces, they're not just, like, people sitting in beanbags, they're bringing together, what do you call them, the tribes, the tribes you know, and, the squads, and, yeah. and they never talk to each other, and you might just get a new idea that uh, is right. really impactful in your organization. Right, right.